Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. In this video we are going to continue talking about the meaning and scope of public finance. For that we are going to talk exactly about the major fiscal functions, then we will gonna have a focus on the principle of maximum social advantage. In the se third section we are going to talk about the different categories of goods and in the fourth section, we are going to discover some model questions. So let's get started. According to Professor Musgrave, there are three major fiscal or budgetary functions of the government. They are the allocation functions, distribution functions, and stabilization functions. There are certain cases in which the wants of all individuals cannot be satisfied through market mechanism. In such cases, the public sector of the governments have to provide goods and services. The allocation branch of public finance deals with the provision of social goods. Social goods are those goods and services produced to satisfy collective wants. Collective wants are those wants which are demanded by all members of the community in equal or more or less equal amounts. The allocation branch explains the process by which the resources in use are divided between private goods and social goods by which the mix of social good is chosen. What about the distribution function? The very important feature of a market economy is the disparity in the distribution of income and wealth. The distribution of function of public finance deals with the adjustment of the distribution of wealth and income to ensure fair or just state of distribution. That is, the distribution function of public finance deals with the determination of taxes and transfer payments policies of the governments. Finally, the stabilization function explains the macroeconomic aspect of budgetary policy. In other words, the stabilization function deals with the use of budgetary policy as a means of maintaining high employment, a reasonable degree of price stability and an appropriate rate of economic growth, with allowances for effects on trade and balance of payments. The major instruments of stabilization policy are monetary policy and fiscal policy. This function is otherwise known as compensatory finance. Now, let's discover the famous principle of maximum social advantage. One of the important principles of public finance is the so called principle of maximum social advantage, explained by Professor Hart Dalton. Just like an individual seeks to maximize his satisfaction or welfare by the use of his resources, the state ought to maximize social advantage or benefit from resources at the, its command. The principles of maximum social advantage are applied to determine whether the tax or the expenditure has to be proved of the optimum benefit. Hence, the principle is called the principle of public finance. According to Dalton, this principle lies at the very root of public finance. He again says the best system of public finance is that which secures the maximum social advantage from the operations which it conducts. It may be also called the principle of maximum social benefit. According to Pigo, he has called it the principle of maximum aggregate welfare. Public expenditure it creates utility for those people on whom the amount is spent. When the volume of expenditure is small with a slighter increase in it, the additional utility is very high. As the total public expenditure goes on increasing in course of time, the law of diminishing marginal utility operates. People derive less of satisfaction from additional unit of public expenditure as the government spends more and more.
that is, after a stage, every increase in public expenditure creates less and less benefit for the people. Taxation, on the other hand, imposes burden on the people. So, when the volume of taxation becomes high, every further increase in taxation increases the burden of it more and more. People undergo cre greater sacrifice for ev every additional unit of taxation. The best policy of the government is to balance both sides of fiscal operations by comparing the burden of tax and the benefits of public expenditure. The state should balance the social burden of taxation and social benefits of public expenditure in order to have maximum social advantage. Attainment of maximum social advantage requires that both public expenditure and taxation should be carried out up to certain limits and no more. Public expenditure should be utilized among the various uses in an optimum manner and the different sources of taxation should be so tapped that the aggregate's sacrifice entail is the minimum. What are the assumptions of the principle? First, the public revenue consists of only taxes and not of gifts, loans, fees, etc. and the state has no surplus or deficit budget. Secondly, public expenditure is subject to diminishing marginal social benefits and the taxes are subject to increasing marginal costs or disutility. According to Dalton, maximum social advantage is at a point where the marginal social sacrifice of taxation and the marginal social benefit MSB are equal. The point of equality between the marginal social sacrifice MSS and the marginal social benefit MSB is referred to as the point of maximum social advantage or least aggregate social sacrifice. Masgrave calls Dalton's principle as maximum welfare principle of budget determination. He puts that the optimum size of the budget is determined at point where net social benefit, the NSB, of fiscal operations to the society become zero. The NSB is the difference between MSB and MSS. Masgrave presented Dalton's principles of MSA with some slight differences. Let's discover this diagrammatical representation. The curves MSE and MSB show the marginal social sacrifice of taxation and the marginal social benefit of public expenditure, respectively. MSS curve slopes upwards since taxation increases marginal social sacrifice. The MSB curves slopes downwards, show, showing that public benefit goes on declining with every increase in public expenditure. The ideal point of financial operations is where the governments collect OM taxation from the society and uses it for public expenditure. At this point, MSS is exactly equal to MSB, the point E. At OM1, MSS is M1F1, which is less than MSB, M1E1. Thus, depicting a loss of welfare to the society, E1, F1. Similarly, the government is collecting OM2 taxation to finance larger public expenditure. The MSS is higher than MSB by E2, F2. So, the ideal level of taxation and expenditure is at OM. According to Dalton, public expenditure is every direction should be carried just so far that the advantage to the community of a further small increase in any direction is just counterbalanced by the disadvantage of a corresponding increase in taxation or in receipts with from any other source of public income. This gives the ideal public expenditure and income. Now, let's discover 
the various categories of goods. Indeed, the invisible goods whose benefits cannot be priced, and therefore to which the principle of exclusion does not apply, are called public goods. The use of such goods by one individual does not reduce their availability to other individuals, for example, the national defense. What are the characteristics of public goods? The first characteristic is that n called non-rivaling consumption. One person's consumption does not diminish the amount available to others. Once produced, public goods are available to all in equal amount. Marginal cost of providing the public goods to additional consumers is zero. The second characteristic of public goods is called the non-excludable characteristic. Once a public good is produced, the suppliers cannot easily deny it to those who fail to pay. That is, those who cannot or do not agree to pay it. Its market price are not debarred or excluded from its use. The third characteristic, free rider problem. People can enjoy the benefits of public goods whether pay for them or not. They are un usually, usually unwilling to pay for public goods. This act is the so-called free rider problem. We also have the private goods. Private goods refer to all those goods and services consumed by private individuals to satisfy their wants. For example, food, clothing, car, etc. Private goods are characterized by three features. They are excludable. Indeed, the suppliers of private goods can very well exclude those who are unwilling to pay. The second one is rivalry in conception. One person's consumption reduces the amount available to others. That is, the amount consumed by one person is unavailable for others to consume. The third feature is related to the revealed preference. The consumers reveal their preferences through effective demand and market price. These revealed preferences are the signals for the producers to produce the goods the individuals want. We also have the mixed goods. Mixed goods are the, those goods having benefits which are wholly internalized, rival and others, the benefits of which are wholly externalized, non-rival, and the cost of producing such goods partly covered by private contributions and partly by government subsidy. Eventually, we often talk about the merit goods. Those goods whose conception and use are to be encouraged are called merit goods, for example, education. And goods whose conception and use are to be discouraged are called non-merit goods or demerit goods, for example, liquor and so on. Drugs merit goods are socially desirable goods which promote social welfare. Merit goods are rival and excludable governments provide merit goods in order to ensure distributional justice. These are goods which governments feel if people will underconsume or produce and therefore should be subsidized or provided free. Examples of merit goods are education, midday meals in schools, essential food articles, etc. This concept was introduced by Professor Musgrave in 1959. Now let's find out the model questions. We can summarize them into six questions. The first one, what is public finance? Discuss the scope or subject matter of public finance. The second one, distinguish between public finance and private finance. Three. What is the role of public finance in the economic development of a country? 4. What are the fiscal functions of governments according to Professor Marx Grave? 5. Explain the principle of maximum social advantage theory. 6. 
write short notes on a public wants and private wants b married goods and mixed goods c the importance of public finance so this is the end of this video the next video will be related to the public expenditure thank you very much for your attention